mun gan su da ido da yake Allah ta maike mu mun mun boye suka kone mun tafi ma church na ba abin da ya fita jiki duk abin da ke cikin church an kone shi ana kone gari masu harbi bin diga suna harbi nan nan zaune ba wuri kwance ba abinci it looks like scenes from a war zone in June 2016, the small Christian village, Ninta, in the south of Kaduna state in Nigeria, was attacked by Muslim Fulani herdsmen. All the villagers fled, but now they have returned to their ransacked houses because they have nowhere else to go. Unknown to most of the world, it is Muslim Fulani herdsmen who have demolished many villages like Ninta in the so-called Middle Belt states in Nigeria. Life for Christians in the north of Nigeria is tough. In 12 states, daily life is greatly organized according to Sharia law. In these states, Christians are an unwanted minority. In the northeast, moderate Muslims, but especially Christians, are victims of brutal attacks and kidnappings by Boko Haram. Christians in the Middle Belt states fall victim to a totally different danger, gangs of Fulani herdsmen. It rained that night. We didn't know what was taking place until when the Fulanis came with their sophisticated weapons, surrounded the village at night. And before our people knew it, they tried to run after their lives. There was a casual, there was an aged man that was killed because when the children tried to run away, he was unable to go. They didn't pick him. So he was born into ashes. The attacks are carried out by Fulani herdsmen. These herdsmen are part of the Fula people, a people that is spread all over West Africa. One third of the Fulani are nomadic herdsmen. They do not live in settlements, but just move around with their cattle. In Nigeria alone, there are millions of Fulani herdsmen. Every year, Nigeria loses thousands of square kilometers of grazing lands to desertification. This means that there is not enough room for farmers and Fulani herdsmen to live side by side. It's only in the last six to eight years that things have got dramatically out of hand. The Fulani force their way onto farms where their cows eat the harvest and trample what is left. Fights break out regularly. This is my house. There is no any single thing that we carry out from this house as we sit it. There are lots of life in the village, which we lost almost up to 15 people in the village. This very area, we lost us to 15 or 20, 20 people. The incident that took place here, it was on 24th November. By two o'clock PM, they came in mass over 300 people, yes, over 300 people that came here again in the village. Most all of them, every one of them is carrying AK-47, AK so everybody has to run away with his life. Village after village has been affected, not all at once. The attacks are haphazard, a village here and a few months later a village there. Reliable numbers are hard to come by, but our sources talk about over 50 villages attacked in the last 12 months. Generally, it goes like this. Villagers chase a Fulani herdsman from their fields because he's ruining their harvest. Other Fulani decide to take revenge. They ask Muslims from around to join them in the attack. They then destroy the whole village, killing everybody who doesn't run away in time. The attackers, they were the Fulanis and Hausa Muslim people that joined them into the war. Did you know these people? Do you know where they live? Do you know who they are? Uh, some of them were noticed. And some we didn't know because it was a kind of a, an invitation all over into the village so that uh, most of the people do not know them. But few we are identified. During most of the attacks, at least a few of the attackers are known to the victims and they are reported to the police. With these people that we knew them, we told the government 
about them, but no any action. There is no single person that has been arrested or arrested. Most of the Christians we spoke to in the Middle Belt have lost trust in the ability of the government to protect them. Government is not helping the situation, especially those in the higher affair. So at times when they will be having these suspects, and after some times again they will be released. Many Christian villagers told us they believe that the local government and some parts of the army are actively supporting the Fulani attackers. You see, what the uh, law enforcement are handling is not as strong as the weapons where these Fulanis are handling. Who gave them the sophisticated weapons? And anytime, if a strike is to take place, there will be a helicopter coming down and land in the bush. So the next thing will be an attack somewhere else within around. Who then supply this sophisticated? Who this who is the person that supplied to them? And then there is this other concerning reality. Religion is playing an important part in the many violent Fulani attacks against Christians. And this is a church that was destroyed and is now being rebuilt. There is a religion influence. Any Muslim house, they will never temper with. But any house that belongs to Christians, these are the houses that they normally destroy. They attack mostly Christian, mostly Christian, where Christian dominated areas, dominated area of Christian. That is why, you see, they burn our churches. But there is no new mosque that burn down, but all the churches burn down. The solution that the government has offered is that local villagers give away part of their land to Fulani for grazing their cattle. But villagers are not willing to just give away their forefathers' land. These Fulani need place to rear their cattle. The government said we should give grazing areas, grazing reserve to Fulani people. And when there is nowhere we can take a land, which is our forefathers, our great-great-fathers' land, and which we live here, uh, they really want to maneuver and capture our lands, our parents, the home of our parents, where we know it has been our indigenous site of our settling from our grandparents. So they want to make it by force to see that they drive us out of this land and then stay and graze their cattle. The result of this force is not that villagers are leaving their villages. They stay. They eat fruits and they keep on farming the land, even though they live in fear and have to share the few houses and rooms that still have roofs. Babu wuri kwanche. And the deren kafe shida yai to muna chicken tunani. Koza su zo de deren kuma. Ko ya zamu yanzu da muna zama da rana na muna dariya. Amma ya man yai haka. Ko wa tunanin shi sai koma ciki ba mu sun koma ya zai yi da dare da mu ba. Ah da na na gan su yanzu na jin dadi domin suna suna kare mu a garin. Akwai tsoro. Idan sojoji suna nan ba mu san cewa zo na har abada ba amma so mu in Allah ya da salama ta shigo wannan kasa da aka yafe mu ba dalili mu gudu mu bar shi ai mana addu'a da karfi kuma a taimake mu da wuraren kwance addu'a da kuma wuri kwance da abinci 